and he did not back down at practice all week long. He was a handful and an earful for the Seahawks, and he's had a great camp, and he can also return putts. Yeah, no doubt about it as we see the call go against the Tennessee Titans. It cost him five yards. Exact same thing we saw in the first position. Yeah, so 37 was, to 3rd and 12. It was a Juku on the right side. Was that Jaron Christian on the left side this time? I believe at left tackle. Jalen Duncan. Jalen Duncan, excuse yeah. me. Jalen Duncan, the second-year player out of Maryland. But Corey's right about these receivers. And Mason Kinsey, he didn't back down at all against Seattle. Talked a little trash while he was out there making plays. Willis in trouble. Has to fire that one toward Westbrook Akine. So they missed the connection on the wide open Westbrook Akine. Then they have the five-yard penalty. Pressure gets to him there, and the punt team coming out. Someone better think about blocking this guy right here, number 53, Boye Mafe. Really good play. Look how relentless he is. And then look at him gain ground and close. Good job by Malik Willis sensing who he, sensing him being there and getting rid of the football to no harm. Ty Zittner out for his second punt of the night. High, not quite a spiral down to the inside the 15 from the 13. D. Williams, nice cutback in trouble though. Gets out to the 16-yard line, and that is it. The rookie cornerback from Louisville, Jarvis Brownlee, making the play on special teams. You're watching the Titans Network, presented by Farm Bureau Insurance. Wilson in his defense. Defense has been awfully good so far. They've forced a pair of three and outs. See it? Seattle's only had the ball twice. Well, he had a man in his face that time, did Howell. Good job of getting the completion out to the 20-yard line. I feel like the ball got tipped. I think it got affected because of what you were talking about. Let's take a look here and see what happens. Looks like Jalen Harrell again, and I think he got a piece of it. And somehow Sam Howell had enough arm strength to get it out there as he runs the route against Trey Avery. And somehow they got a completion despite the pressure by Harrell. Brian Callahan, when I asked him yesterday, Charles, what position group, like where will your eyes go first on defense? He didn't hesitate. He said, my young linebackers. Right here in the middle. James Williams, Jalen Harrell. Second down five. Here comes another blitz. Campbell didn't get there in time. Nice job by Howell getting that one out. And that'll be Seattle's first first down just across the 30-yard line to LaVisca Chenault. Gain of eights. Yeah, and, and, Her and look, Howell read that one well and threw to the vacated spot. But what I liked about this play was the pressure came. Seattle figs it, figured it out and hit it. But look who's right there on the spot filling the gap. Elijah Molden. So that's good cohesiveness on defense. Look, they're going to hit a few passes along the way. You're not going to just shut them out. But when they do hit one, the next guy has to be there to cover for his teammate. Chance Campbell, leading tackler last week, had a tackle for loss, had the game-ending interception, and a good two days against the Seahawks during the week. Little fly sweep around the left side, and a nice job by Chenault to break in tackles. But the Titans were there to keep that to a short gain out to the 33. Gained about four or five. Elijah Molden was there first. And I thought they did a good job with the defensive front. Coy Curtis, I know Marlon Davidson isn't playing tonight, but this defensive front's done a nice job in camp, haven't they? Yeah, Marlon Davidson tore a biceps. During those good practices against the Seahawks, he's unfortunately out for the season. So that depth will be tested. They, in fact, signed Abdullah Anderson just yesterday. Journeyman who's played for five different teams. He'll get some action tonight. He wears number 78 after that injury to Davidson. Draw sweep to the right side. Titans pursued pretty heavy out there around the corner. Polani, the ball carrier. Chance Campbell was there, and he got there with authority. Gain a three to bring up third and short. Corey Curtis is defensive front trying to keep these linebackers clean so they can make those types of plays. Yeah, and they've got a real opportunity with Marlon Davidson down for the season. One guy I'm looking at is big TK McClendon, a former tight end at LSU. Now a defensive lineman put on 15 pounds this offseason, up to 295 pounds. And we saw the big finish last week uh, by, by Keandre Coburn. Those are guys with a real chance to play now with that opening in the lineup. McClendon wearing 96, Coburn 91. I'll guarantee you Paul McClendon will tell you he could still play tight end. End. Third down and two. More linebacker blitz. Good job by Howell. This is a first down. Seattle just inside of Tennessee territory. Evaded the blitz and found A.J. Barner, rookie out of Michigan, one of the many good players coming out in the draft from Ann Arbor. He got 16. Yeah, pretty sure that Denard Wilson, the defensive coordinator, and then, of course, Frank Bush, the linebacker's coach, what they will say in the meeting after that play, hey, if we're going to send you to get you home, you got to finish it off. 
You can't miss him in the pocket like that because that creates those types of plays, and they gave up a first down. So Seattle didn't pick up a single first down, Charles, in their first two drives. That was their second on this. Now they set up shop inside of Tennessee territory. First down and 10. Right up the middle, they find success against that depleted defensive line. That's the third first down on this drive. This time down to the 33 after gain of 13. And this was something that Denard Wilson talked about with, with us, Paul, that he wanted to help clean up from last week. What he calls leaky yardage. Everything was blocked up so well on that play by Seattle that the ball carrier wasn't pressed until he got to the third level, until he got to the secondary. That's not something you want to see. You need your defensive front to at least slow him down. And he started to make a play on him by the second level where the linebackers are. Elijah Molden, the safety, made the stop. Fourth-year player out of Washington. And they try it again. This time, more success as they bounce it out to the left. And they get inside the 25-yard line. Just enough for another first down. Kenny McIntosh on back-to-back -back runs, basically between the tackles, gets double-digit gains. That one got him 11. Paul, I thought the defensive front did a nice job initially because they stacked it up. But good eyes by McIntosh to see that the gap was on the left side when it was supposed to be blocked to the right. He took his eyes left, and the backside uh, deep defender not up on the line of scrimmage and allowed McIntosh access to the secondary. No score yet here in Tennessee. Second preseason game for the Seahawks and the Titans. Sam Howell and Seattle threatening here. First down and 10 on the 24. Nice pocket to the end zone. Touchdown, Seattle. Aesop Winston Jr. out of Washington State makes it 6 0 Seahawks. That was blocked really well by Seattle. No pressure on Sam Howell, and he threw a perfect pass to Aesop Winston. Look up front. No one even close to number six in the backfield, and he put a perfect ball on number 13, Aesop Winston Jr., right over the shoulder of Trey Avery. Boy, Sam Howell couldn't have thrown that ball any better. You pointed it out, Charles. That was pretty right on the money. He had half a step on Avery, and the ball was dropped right in his breadbasket. First touchdown of the night. And the extra point from Jason Myers. Oh! Oh, tail there at the end. A doink. Hello, upright. Let's see if that'll come back and cost him. Sam Howell, job well done. Touchdown pass. Extra point is missed. And the visiting Seahawks on top. Six to nothing. Can't walk out there and place the ball any better than that. This is the time to be that third guy in the backfield as we're now inside a minute left in the first quarter. And as you noted before, Jabari Small getting a little notice too out of Tennessee. Nice step up there by Willis. Now go ahead and keep it yourself. He slid, slid right near the sticks there. He's going to be about a half a yard short. Nice job of getting down. Gain of eight. Remember, we saw Will Levis hit, take that giant hit at the goal line last week, and Malik said no thanks. Yeah, and I talked with Nick Holes, the offensive coordinator, about that hit that Will Levis took last week. And he said, what were you doing? And Levis said, Coach, I like to get hit and get into the game. And Holt said, not like that, not again. Don't do that. Says we like to, to keep <laughs> you in the game. We want to have you around. And that'll do it here for the first quarter. And Malik Willis, we knew he would play the first, but if you start the first quarter and it's your drive, do you get the second? This is going to be interesting to see how they do it, right? Or is it like Little League Baseball when you hit your pitch count? you got to come yes. out anyway. Sam Howell had a pretty touchdown pass for the Seahawks. No points yet for the Titans. We head to the second quarter of the Titans Network presented by Farm Bureau Insurance. that talent yeah and remember it all started with seeing him the first time at OTAs he said he almost pulled out the tape from then just from that time frame to show Malik Willis how far he's progressed in terms of footwork and ball placement since that time Julius Chestnut good cutback the vision shows up there good run out to the 47 yard line picks up six on first down Really good cut back as you described. And the best part was the surge he got on the backside when he made the cut. Watch the offensive line over here because this is where the cutback is going to occur. Starts to the right. Good job taking him down in there. That's Lachavia Simmons, number 73. Excellent job working his way back that way. And also Jalen Duncan, number 71. Both of them did a nice job pushing the defenders inside to allow for the cutback by Chestnut. Chestnut remains in the game to go along with the vision. Brian Callahan telling us yesterday really runs behind his pads. Has another chance to show that here. Breaks a tackle in the backfield, but nowhere to go. 
And no gain to bring up third down and five. And this, Charles, should be another chance for Malik Willis to show up with the passing game. A little extracurriculars there. These teams got after each other on Wednesday and Thursday to carries over into Saturday evening. But Malik Willis had some good moments in that first quarter, did miss an open receiver. And this is a big play for him on third down and four. These are the plays that make you a big-time quarterback in the NFL. Third down is where you make your reputation, where your team starts to believe in you. Let's see if one of these receivers who's trying to make the team can shake themselves open and have Willis deliver. Tennessee one for three, converting third down. Four-man rush. Westbrook Akine, nice strong hands, gets just enough for the Titans' first down. And that's a guy that we think is going to make the team. Corey Curtis told us he thinks that Nick Westbrook Akine is safe for this ball club, and this is why. Mr. Dependable, Mr. Reliable, as his head coach Brian Callahan would call him, said he admired him while he was in Cincinnati. Watch him. Then he got to see him up close, and he makes play after play continuously. They keep the sticks moving for Tennessee. Talk about accepting your role. He knows he's the fourth receiver, and he knows he might have to go in at any one of those positions. And he's trusted all along the line there on that perimeter. Tennessee now setting up for the first time tonight inside of Seattle territory. Willis flushed out. Penalty marker comes in. He does find an open man. At the 41-yard line, that's Jabari Small out of the backfield. Would be a gain of seven, but we'll check in here with Craig Rolstad. Came from a bad place for an offense, coming from a referee Holding or an umpire. Offense, number 61. It's a 10-yard penalty. Replay first down. Yeah, John Ojuku, he had a false start earlier in the ball game. This time he gets caught holding. The big man out of Boise State trying to make this roster. You remember well, and Brian Callahan talked about it yesterday to us, when Malik Willis was coming out of Liberty. Started at Auburn, not a lot of time there, and he really came alive there at Liberty. 17-6 and six record, and it was really the combo. Threw for almost 5,000 yards, but ran for 1,800 yards, and that was what was so enticing when he went in the third round. The mobility and the big arm so enticing to teams. Jabari Small gets out of the backfield again, checks it down to him, and he caught it the third time. But the bobble will cost him any chance for the run after the catch goes down there at the 45. Willis took a hit in the pocket on that one, but he made the right decision, Paul. Didn't have what he wanted downfield. Checked it down to the running back. If Small catches that clean, Ooh. he might have a chance to turn. Look like Mike Morris, second-year defender out of the University of Michigan, got to him. There's so many times a backup quarterback, knowing that the chances are limited in August, will just try and go downfield and yeah. force it, and it's hard to get yourself to check it down. So far, he's done a nice job. Second down, 17. He keeps it himself. Quarterback draw. Does that very well. Gets a lot of that yardage back to get him into third down and somewhat manageable. Gets eight. And now it'll be third down and nine. It's a play we're seeing more and more in vogue in the NFL with a mobile quarterback is that quarterback draw. But we're seeing it from a lot of teams where they'll use a center or a guard to be that lead guy for him. In this case, Tennessee used Jabari Small, the running back, to be the lead for, for uh, Malik Willis. And when Malik got to play quite a bit two years ago, ran for over 100 yards and showed plays like that quite a bit. Needs his arm here on third down and nine. Four-man rush. In trouble. Finds a way to get it downfield, and it bounced off his intended receiver. High and away, and that was Mason Kinsey on the sideline. Couldn't come down with it. So he did a nice job getting away from Mafe in the pocket. But as he got outside, he's trying to complete the pass. One, it was contested well by Trey Brown. But two, it came out high. This thing is smoking when it gets to Kinsey. This is going to be a very difficult catch, even if you're not contested. You know, Kinsey expects to catch that, even though you pointed out, Charles, and that was astute. He, that was a fastball. Yeah. It could, have, could have been 90, and it was about 98. It looked like Paul Skeens, the rookie out of Pittsburgh, <laughs> bringing it. Well done. Good catch called for on the 13-yard line. 34-yard punt with no return, so we expect to see Mason Rudolph next time when the Titans come out on offense. Malik Willis had three possessions, no points for Tennessee. This is the Titans Network presented by Farm Bureau Insurance. 3% of surgeries have post-procedure complications. Now Seattle with an early touchdown, but Paul, Tennessee's defense back on the field. We'll get to them, but Malik Willis, his first quarter, what did you see since you're a former QB? Not bad. I mean, five out of eight, 40 yards. He certainly had some good plays, made it happen with his feet as well on called rushes and also outside the pocket. Did miss a wide-open receiver on a well-dialed-up play. Bottom line, though, Charles, he had three possessions. 
They don't have any points yet, and he'll have a chance to go at it again as the third quarter will be his. Nice stiff arm right there for Kenny McIntosh. Picks up four yards, but I thought Malik was fine. I know he wanted to be terrific. Let's go down to the field, and I know Corey Curtis has QB1 here for Tennessee. Yes, I'm down here with Will Levis. Will, in street clothes today, you know, it's, it's quite an opportunity for you this year, and I would imagine it's an exciting one when the court, when the head coach says he wants to take you up to a 70% in completion percentage. No, I mean, he's got high standards for all of us, and we wouldn't want to have it any other way. I know that I've got it in me. I just got to come to work every day uh, looking to get better and keep leading these guys. These past few weeks of camp have been – an awesome opportunity for that, and I feel like we've all taken advantage of it. So 70%, that's a really good number to look forward to, and hope we can get it done. Big key to that, I think you said, was doing the boring stuff. 100%. Yeah, no, it's uh, not getting bored doing the boring thing. I've said it a few times, and I'll continue to say it. Uh, I think that uh, that's been a big learning process for me throughout camp is understanding how this offense works and how the playbook works and how certain throws can open up more for you uh, down the road. So, uh, you know, taking what they give you and not being bored taking the, the boring throw. Playing quarterback in the NFL can be a harrowing job. Uh, awfully big for you to have Bill Callahan hired, J.C. Latham drafted, Lloyd Cushenberry brought in. They invested heavily to protect you. 100%. No, it's really cool seeing the investments that the team's made uh, on both sides of the ball. And hey, it means that they got some confidence in me, which, you know, I got to uh, take that every day with me to work and work even harder for them. So we've got, we've got a bunch of great guys in the locker room. I feel like we've, we've already started to, to gel and to understand that we got a special group. So, uh, you know, hats off to the organization for putting together a really good group of good guys. I, I can't have you here without asking you about Will Levis, number eight. Yeah. Uh, for those of you not in the Nashville market, you may not know that uh, Hellman's and Will teamed up on an ad campaign this week, releasing a cologne, which actually you can buy, and the money goes to Youth Villages and Special Olympics. 100%, yeah, really, really cool uh, opportunity for us to not only have some fun, but also, you know, make sure that it goes towards a good cause. So shout out to Special Olympics and Youth Villages Foster Care, and uh, yeah, just bringing laughs to people, bringing joy, and uh, making them smell good, too. Just check it out. It's sold out. Is there any available? I think we're going to continue to do some drops. I don't know what the uh, stock looks like, but hopefully everyone that wants them can get their hands on it. All right, that's Will Levis, Thank number eight. And he has promised us, Paul, it smells great. It yes. does. It really does. Give it a try, for sure. <laughs> I mean, Corey, there's nothing like eau de mayo. <laughs> And I have, I have read where teammates have said, surprising to them, they like the smell. So off we go. Will Levis trying to capitalize, hoping now his defense can get going and get involved here and slow down the Seattle offense. Yeah, this is back-to-back -back drives after they went three and out on back-to-back. -back. They had touchdown. Now Howell back to work once again. Now that ball was put on the ground. I think they're going to rule it a catch and a fumble out of bounds. Yes, so a, a non-traditional way of getting a first down, but the Seahawks passing offense continues to click. Yeah, it's a proper call, too, because the catch is made downfield. And that's a tough one now, Paul. Did yeah. he come down with control and able to make a football move? I think during the regular season, Tennessee would want that to have, you know, somebody take a good look at that one. I think they are now. There we go. I'm not sure that he was able to come down and make that extra action. Looks to me like this may come back and be incomplete. That was number 38 for the Seattle Seahawks. Brady Russell from Colorado unable to really secure it. Uh, this review is sponsored by Hughes and Coleman. Tennessee is challenging the ruling on the field of a completed pass. This review is sponsored by Hughes and Coleman, the official injury lawyers of the Titans. If you've been injured, call 800-800-4600 to schedule your free consultation with the team who has called Tennessee and Kentucky home for over three decades. They're taking a look to see if this was a catch or not. To help protect the young and young at heart, the sick and the well, to recognize the importance of both physical and mental health while giving back to our communities is to do more than what is expected of a health insurance company. It is calling you a member, but treating you like a neighbor. It's been my pleasure. It is making a commitment to be right here for you and keeping it. He shoots!
Attention parents of premature babies. If your baby was born prematurely and given formula in the hospital and has since developed neck, we want to help. Call us at 615-242-9000. There was a time when we welcomed change, when we bounded through piles of golden leaves and relished the chill in the air. There was a time when we embraced new flavors, took new paths, and made new friends. When masterpieces opened our minds and transformed our hearts. It was a time of renewal. It was fall, this fall, at Biltmore. Reserve now to experience Chihuly. Whoa, is this your new Nissan Rogue? Yeah, crazy story. Yesterday, I was at the Nissan end of summer sales event taking a test drive, and Laura says, These Rogues are going fast. I knew I had to have that Rogue. Get up to 2,500 total savings on remaining select Rogue Platinum Trams. Dallas. It's great. Good challenge just before the uh, break by Tennessee head coach Brady Russell because that was not a catch or by... Brian Callahan because Brady Russell did not catch that ball. And I think the reason was, as he's starting to make the move, the ball pops out, he's never able to actually secure it. See, when he brings it down and he's not able to actually tuck it away, I think that's what went against him. Because he made the catch, had it, and was making the move when the ball popped out, but because of the lack of security, they overturned it. Sam Howell stays hot inside the 20-yard line. He's hit seven of his last eight passes. That one to Chenault. It'll be first down from the 12. He's doing a nice job of finding the gaps. Receivers are getting into those openings, and the ball being delivered crisply to them with a chance for them to run after the catch. Is he able to make the catch, Chenault, and turn up field? And Paul, when LaVista Chenault came out of Colorado, I thought he had a chance to be a star in this league. Big, strong, physical, fast receiver. You can use him on reverses, the whole deal. Still trying to find his niche here in the NFL. That linebacker blitz that had been getting home against the Niners and early against the Seahawks not working, but that's a big hit at the line of scrimmage on Holani. Isaiah Eitan, one of those defensive linemen trying to be around for the 53, made that play. Big guy who finished up at Rutgers, but had played at Ole Miss, Northern Colorado, Hutchinson Junior College before he finished up at Rutgers. Makes a nice play there, number 76 in blue. How about that journey? Ole Miss to Rutgers for the last three seasons. We see that so many times now. How about that move to Northern Colorado? That's a heck of a jag. <laughs> Wonder if he, what if he played for Ed McCaffrey there, who was the head coach for a short time? There you go. People might know that last name. Second down, 10. Toss weak. McIntosh has a lane inside the 10, but it flows quickly. He gets down to the 7. The ball came out. Calling and they're saying that he was down before the ball came out to bring up third down. Otis Reese, Corey talked about him at the top, the former SEC safety, trying to make the team as a linebacker. Just like he did last year. Yeah, and he's actually increased his weight. Corey talked about him being 215 pounds. He kind of he wanted to come into camp over 225. Some of these guys, it's hard to hold that weight, but he, he, he you know he parlays it with speed, and that's how he shows up and makes plays. So I'm keeping on Jarvis Brownlee, number 29. Had a little bit of a tough series. Let's see if he can get that shaken off and get back at it. With the corner out of Louisville, Howell. Steps up, penalty marker down, just as Howell goes down at the nine. Isaiah Eiton once again, he's having a nice end of this series. Yeah, he's we'll starting to get on the flag. He's starting to stack some plays together, isn't he? Looks like offensive uh, face mask. Might have been one of the offensive linemen getting underneath a defender rushing quarterback. Personal foul. foul. Face mask. Offense, number 66. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is a fourth down. That's McClendon Curtis, number 66 with Seattle, who played his college ball here in this state at Chattanooga, who ended up getting the call against him. Extra importance for the rookie Eitan to make plays here. Right play there. Rutgers. That's where it happened. Because as we talked about, Marlon Davidson, who was a defensive lineman in front of him, tore his biceps during the joint practices with Seattle this week. He's out for the season, so that spot is available. Jason Myers on to attempt the field goal from 27 yards out. Missed his extra point. That came in the first quarter. 
Notice Tennessee, notice Tennessee didn't take the penalty, so go ahead and kick it. Let's get the ball back on offense. Three points added to the Seattle side of the board. 5.04 left. Seahawks on top of the Titans. 9-0. This is the Titans Network presented by Farm Bureau Insurance. When the Titans take the field, yell. I know. Comes raining in actually two of them as he got out to the 40. I was going to comment on how well blocked that was, Charles, but a potential maybe, hold. Maybe would, a bit too well blocked. <laughs> would be a return of 38 yards. And Craig Rolstad has been busy here tonight in the first half. One thing about Jackson, he sees it, he goes. He doesn't hesitate. During the return holding, receiving team number 52. That's a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, Tennessee. Rookie seventh-round linebacker out of Miami, James Williams there. Making the conversion from safety his entire time at the University of Miami. First time he played linebacker, Paul, was in the run-up to the draft when he played it at the Senior Bowl. They like his aggressiveness because he was a monster-sized safety while playing for the Hurricanes. As planned, Malik Willis got the first quarter and then a little bit more. Mason Rudolph playing in the second quarters and the fourth. Brian Callahan telling us yesterday he does have the edge in this race. He would be the second quarterback as it stands right now. They just wanted to give Malik a chance there. Off the right side is Julius Chestnut. And Charles, one of the reasons Mason Rudolph has the edge right now is he's 29 years old. This is his seventh season. He has played a lot of football, not only in the NFL with 14 starts, but also going back to his time at Oklahoma State. Yeah, and it, and it led to some great quotes from Brian Callahan about him. Talked about how comfortable he is, but he can play fast. He loves the fact that he's still open to being coached on footwork and timing. He doesn't think he has it all as a veteran. And he has some gamer in him. Showed that in Pittsburgh with how he finished down the stretch. Brian Callahan told us he has separated himself as the best runner after Spears and Pollard. Your wide receivers are involved in the blocking as well. Corey Curtis, hang tough. I want to get to you after this play, sir. Just not battling his son Haskins to be that next back after Spears and Pollard. Another hesitation move. This time he just gets out to the 50 for a gain of one. And Corey, come on in. But Corey, I want you to talk to us a little bit about this running back situation. Paul teed it up early in the ball game. This third running back is becoming very intriguing for the Titans, isn't it? Yeah, it's becoming a little more challenging because Hassan Haskins isn't just a good special teams player. He, he might be a core four special teams player. But Julius Chestnut has such great balance, and he's a big back, and you, and you saw him there. He's able to change speeds a little bit. And the thing I love about him, he's the ultimate team player. This is a guy who had a chance to transfer from Sacred Heart and make some money and want to stay with his team. He's a good dude. And while we're talking running backs, another one creeps in there. Well done by Jabari Small, undrafted rookie free agent out of Tennessee. That's enough for a Titans first down. And he also has serious thoughts of making this team. Yeah, he kind of went tears for fears on us for all you fans of 80s music. Don't you forget about me. Look at him right there. Post right up in the ball right there when he turns around. Does a nice job of enveloping it and then getting upfield for a little bit of additional yardage. Another guy who is similar to what Corey described with Julius Chestnut. Team first. Anything you need from me, I can do it. Always dependable and ready to go is Jabari Small. Small again. Well, he was in high speed right away. Absorbs a hit there as he gets out to the 32-yard line. And, Charles, he's somebody who's used to success on this field. Almost ran for 200 yards at Tennessee when he played on this field in the Music City Bowl. Yeah, he really got after it in that one. And look at him going to go fast now. Nick Holtz, offensive coordinator. Brian Callahan, play caller, changing the tempo and increasing it for Tennessee. Not quite going to get that playoff with a two-minute warning. For the first time, the Tennessee Titans offense is clicking. It's actually the second time they've been inside of Seahawks territory. We'll see if they get points here on the Titans Network presented by Farm Bureau Insurance. One, depending on what the coverage is, if the quarterback sees it one way and the receiver sees it another, oftentimes the beneficiary, the guys on defense, Tennessee fortunate there. Tennessee converting two out of five times on third down here. One time Malik Willis got it on a well-designed and executed goes for yeah. it here. All three timeouts left, fourth down in less than a yard coming up, 137, 136 and counting. Now, it'd be interesting to see what they go with because in game one, Will Levis scored a touchdown on a sneak on short yardage. Here in this game, Malik Willis got a first down on short yardage on a sneak. Is that in Mason Rudolph's game? Is that something that they want to do right now? Yeah, they're going to call timeout and, and chat about it. 
Brian Callahan telling us yesterday with his quarterback Mason Rudolph in there, we talked about the experience he has with 41 starts at Oklahoma State, 14 starts in the league. I said, where does that experience show up? And he said, at the line of scrimmage, because every time he gets there, I can tell he has a plan. Yeah, yeah, and he's not altered by what he sees. He's not confused by different things that show up. He'll read something pre-snap, and if it rotates into something else post-snap, he has an answer for that as well. Paul, his first start at Oklahoma State as a freshman came against Baylor, who I think was in the top 10 at the time, maybe even the top five, late in the season because they ran out of quarterbacks. They wanted to redshirt him. They took the red shirt off of him week 10, week 11. He played in that game and then beat Oklahoma the very next week. He's not phased by much. See what he has here on fourth and less than a yard. That's Julius Chestnut behind him. Quarterback sneak. See, he wanted to go off the right side. Looks like he got just enough. Yes, he did to keep that drive rolling. And that was the start of something, Charles, because he ended up as not only the all-time winningest quarterback at Oklahoma State, but also the all-time leading passer. He, and, and, Paul, that sneak emphasize what you just talked about he has a plan there you go because he didn't just get behind the center and hope that there was a hole he hesitated to count saw the gap and then he went nice pocket over the middle kinsey first down tennessee to the 15 and he's not done three seahawks bring him down First down of the quarterback sneak, then on the dart over the middle. Clock stops in the timeout, 42 seconds left. I like what you talked about because look at the pocket. That's the first thing you said. Yeah, he got pressured late, but he had already made the decision and delivered a strike to Mason Kinsey. Overall, I think Bill Callahan, offensive line coach, would like that pocket for him. Nice crisp route by Kinsey. Ball was there on the break. So oftentimes we'll hear an offensive coordinator or a head coach talking about it, and a nice catch there and a good fight after the catch by Kinsey. How a quarterback will have the game slow down for him and the fact that he mentioned that he has a good plan at the line of scrimmage. One example of a way the game slows down for a veteran quarterback. No doubt about it. We just saw it. Full display right there with Mason Rudolph. Empty backfield this time. Three pass catchers to his left, pair to his right. Tennessee still with one timeout left. Plan is, plan is a good idea. You know what's even better? The guy who takes the plan and turns it into even more. Caught it on the quick strike, the quick slant, and then was physical about running through three other Seahawks to get to the end zone. Nick Westbrook Akine has found a real home here in Tennessee, and he may be the fourth receiver. But he may be one of the better fourth receivers in the NFL. Now over 1,200 yards receiving in the regular season, just continues to make this team. And as Brian Callahan said yesterday, just be Mr. Reliable and dependent at every single wide receiver spot. Like the work after the catch there that time, too. Yeah, that was where he just, you know, it's easy to say, oh, he really wanted it. But the determination, being physical as a receiver and everything he does allowed him to pinball his way into the end zone. And, Paul, you remembered Indiana prior to his knee injury? He was talked about being a second-round receiver in the league. Ended up being undrafted, but has found his way here in Nashville. Nick Folk right down the middle. Mason Rudolph to Nick Westbrook. Akine smiles for Tennessee's first touchdown of the night. Football is back, and it should be an exciting year at Nissan Stadium. Don't miss your chance to watch the Titans as they take on the Bengals, Packers, Jets, Patriots, and Vikings. Scan the QR code to learn more. Presented by SeatGeek, the official ticketing partner of the Titans. Like the comfort level that Mason Rudolph had there in the pocket a couple of times there, you could tell he was coming back to his second or third receiver. Yeah, I think that, that calm demeanor because of the confidence he has in what he's seen in his time in the NFL. You know, you actually play faster, Paul, when the game does slow down, don't you? Oh, yeah. Meaning that you have the confidence to go ahead and cut it loose and do it. You're not hesitant in your reads. You're not hoping, to, you know, you're not saying the receiver has to be flat out open before I throw it. He's throwing it with anticipation and pace. Looking like a guy who started the last three regular season games and won them as his team. The Steelers needed to have them to get into the postseason. They'll always love him in the Steel City for yeah. that because he, he, he jockeyed them into the playoffs last year down the stretch before they lost there in the first first round there at Buffalo from the goal line. This is young. Hops out, keeps his feet out to the 27 yard line. Seattle has three timeouts left, 33 seconds remaining on the clock, and now they lead by two. It's been Sam Howell the entire way, the third-year quarterback out of North Carolina. Spent his first two seasons with Washington. In fact, started every game there last year. 
And Sam jogs out again. He had a stretch there, Charles. First quarter into the second where he hit six consecutive throws, including a touchdown pass, and I would imagine they'll cut him loose here. Yeah, and it wasn't just the starts last year, Paul. How many times did he throw the football? I mean, an incredible amount of yardage on a team that was pretty average overall, and he took a lot of sacks in doing so. Titans bring four. Powell, far sideline. Off the fingertips inside of Titans territory. Trey Avery with the coverage. He was the one that was on the wrong side of the touchdown pass. So good to see him bounce back. Clock stops 28 seconds until halftime. Nice job by Avery understanding where he was on the field and using the sideline as an assisting defender for him. Press him into the sideline. Yeah, go up and catch it if you want to. No room for you to come down in bounds. Good body positioning by Avery. One of those undrafted free agents a couple of years ago who just sticks around. This is his third camp with the Titans. Second and 10 now, 28 seconds left. Fake the draw, flushed out to his right. He could keep it himself. And he does so and gets out of bounds just as he crossed the 30-yard line. Clock stops right now with 20 seconds left. Five-yard gain. They do have all three timeouts left. Rashad Weaver there to chase him out of bounds. Again, no starters playing tonight for Tennessee on either side of the ball. Brian Callahan making that choice after hard work against Seattle on Wednesday and Thursday. He said, my starters basically had a full game experience in those two days. So we give them a rest here tonight and see which backups and which third stringers should be around when they cut down to 53 a week from Tuesday. Howell looks up over the middle, a little behind his man, but the catch made at the 46-yard line. Clock stops, 14 seconds left. That's Jake Bobo. And Denard Wilson wants to be aggressive at all times, whether he brings extra def extra defenders at the quarterback or not. Still line up in man coverage and challenge receivers. And that time Gabe Judy, Judy Lally out of Tennessee, an undrafted free agent. Receiver gained a step on him, able to make that catch. Spent a lot of time working with defensive backs in the NFL, Charles. In fact, the last 12 years, Ravens, Eagles, Jets, Rams, and as he told you and you pointed out earlier, he's been doing everything possible for this opportunity that he's coveted as a D coordinator. This is his first go. Multiple times he's been a passing game coordinator. Now, full responsibility for all aspects of the defense. See how aggressive they are now on this part of the field. 14 seconds left. They drop seven. Howell Pat steps up, finds an open man, and he ducks up to the 38-yard line. That's Winston. He scored the touchdown earlier. Eight seconds left. They called timeout to stop the clock. And they still have timeouts to go there for Tennessee. Now, this will be interesting to see what they want to call over there. Ryan Grubbs, the first-year coordinator, come out of the University of Washington, played for a national championship out last year. What he and Mike McDonald want to do, do they want to go ahead and press it towards the end zone? Or do you want to try and get one more shot in there and then see how your field goal operation works? So in preseason, you want to see everything. So right now, that would be about a 56-yard attempt. Eight seconds left and a timeout. See if they can get closer here. Howell has a touchdown pass. Mason Rudolph has a touchdown pass. Flushed out to the sideline. A diving attempt, and that is a catch made. Three seconds left. They do get closer for that field goal attempt. And that's a nice diving grab by Brady Russell. Remember, he had the drop earlier in this quarter. Almost in the same spot where he had the drop. You know, almost the same point on the field, same area. And now that allows Seattle to get their field goal kicker out there as they try and poke void points on the board as we head to the half. So from the right hash, this will be a field goal attempt from 48 yards out from Jason Myers. Seattle already up to missed an extra point earlier, but then he made good on a field goal here in the second quarter. His 48 yarder to end the first half was never in doubt. His second field goal put Seattle on last year and now he is officially the man. You got you to peek at him with the joint practices this yeah. week. Yeah, he, he looks the part. Competitive, tough guy. Learning how to run the offense the way Brian Callahan wants it run. Trying to do everything that they want, that they have asked of him on offense. And he loves to play the game of football. Out across the 30 yard line and skipping out to the 36. Another nice return by Jaquan Jackson. You asked to see a little more from him. With penalty marker is down. 
A lot more of that in the first half tonight than we saw last week against San Francisco. That would be a return by Jackson of 34 yards. Yeah, I want to see him more in the pass game now. That's the next step for him in this Tennessee offense. During the return, holding, receiving team, number 36. It's a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. Yeah, that's Cole to Anderson, the special teams coach with the headset on. Not real happy about that penalty there. They played pretty well on, all, on special teams last week. And I think overall he was pleased because when I asked him about it, he said, number one thing is we competed. Loved how we competed last week in San Francisco. And in this week, wanted to see, see that coverage continue to evolve. Last week they kicked the ball down the middle on kickoff coverage. He wants to try and angle it a little bit more when they're covering tonight. See if Mason Rudolph can make it back-to-back -back touchdown drives there. That won't help. Pretty leaky up front on Jabari Small. Knights, the linebacker in to make that stop. Brings up second down 11. Yes, yeah, so Leroy Watson, number 72, being upset after the play. The offensive lineman who had played in Cleveland last year for Bill Callahan when he was offensive line coach there. Leroy is a former tight end turned offensive tackle out of University of Texas San Antonio, UTSA. Felt like he missed his block on that one based on his expression after the play. Rudolph. Too high. Missed his intended receiver, and that was number 80, Bryce Oliver. All-time leading touchdown score from the wideout position at Youngstown State. And that'll set up third down 11. And that would have been a heck of a catch by him as well, because D.J. James, the rookie out of Auburn, was draped all over his upfield shoulder. On the opposite sideline, Charles, Mike McDonald, the new head coach for Seattle, knows all about Mason Rudolph. He was the D coordinator in Baltimore last year. End of the season when Rudolph came in in the game they had to have and completed 18 out of 20 in a Steelers win. This is third down 11. Sets up the screen, small, across the 10. Good patience and then the burst. Good enough for a Tennessee first down. He gets 16 yards. And the patience you just referenced, I believe set up the block that sprang him. Watch as he catches the ball. There's the patience, the hesitation. And right there, you see what he set up? That allowed number 62, Corey Levin, to come from inside out and make the block. Right there is what you're talking about, Paul. That patience, let the block develop, then the acceleration and picks up a first down. Smart running by Small and really good hustle by Levin. Brian Callahan telling us yesterday he really likes two things about him, the way he can cut and the way he can accelerate. We saw that acceleration right there, picking up the first little skip. Avoids a tackle for a loss and picks up one. Each of the last three years, Charles of Tennessee, the undrafted free agent, was either the leading rusher or the second leading rusher for the Vols. Yeah, he understood his role because different guys would emerge. Other guys wouldn't be. Remember, Jalen Wright emerged big for Tennessee last season and kind of took over the number one running back spot, ran for 1,000 yards, averaged darn near eight yards a carry. But Jabari Small, never, Jabari Small never said anything. Just kept working and took his opportunities when they came. So far in running back, Charles, we have seen mostly Small and Chestnut. Now we get a look at Hassan Haskins. Checks out to the right side. Rudolph keeps it himself to the left. And runs out of bounds near the 30-yard line. That's not the way he wants to make a living. Has a no. little chuckle about it. Better than throwing it into coverage, though. No, he understood what he was seeing and just exited and got what he could. Would have been interesting if that's Malik Willis seeing the same exact thing and see him jackrabbit to the corner because he has a chance to actually turn it upfield and gain additional yardage. Mike McDonald, one of the many new first-year head coaches in the league, D coordinator for Baltimore last year. Recently was the defensive coordinator at Michigan and Hassan Haskins. A number of players here knew him in that role as well when they were together in Ann Arbor. Third down seven. Rudolph wants to set up the screen again, and this time it's not going to work. Exact same play, this time to Hassan Haskins, and this time Seattle defense was ready. Yeah, that was Patrick O'Connell out of Montana all over that play. Sniffed it out and was right there. So Rudolph will jog to the sideline, and he's expected to play the entire third quarter, and then Malik Willis will come back in and play the fourth quarter. Malik took care of the first and the early part of the second quarter for the Tennessee offense. D. Williams back to receive. Ty Zintner on to punt for Tennessee. And for Tennessee fans, Ryan Stonehouse, they believe, is pretty much ready. I think they're just being cautious with him, Paul, the punter. You know what I mean? We may see him in the next game, or we may see him regular season, but... 
he should be ready to go when it's all said and done. This is the Titans Network presented by Farm Bureau Insurance. That was a punt of 47 yards. This broadcast is copyrighted by NFL Production. Now with the Seattle offense, they run right away up the middle. Nice job there by the interior of that Titans defense. But from assistant general manager to president of football operations, seems to me like, like a pretty nice jump here from year one to year two. What does your new job entail? Yeah, it is. Uh, it is. It's a great opportunity for me. You know, um, I look at my role as just uh, I'm here to help uh, bring our entire football staff together and, and make sure they have everything they need uh, to succeed in their respected roles. And um, so I'm involved in a lot of things. You know, my background is, is as a, uh, an evaluator, a scout, uh, worked on the salary cap. Uh, so I still um, help uh, Rand Carthon and Brian Callahan in those areas. But my day-to-day -day responsibilities deals with cap management, data analytics, um, involved in football information systems, communications, just every, everything you could think of when it comes to the football operations. In other words, he's doing more than you and I do. Oh, without question, each and every day. So, Chad, with all that being said, though, you started with what your background is, football evaluations. I have a feeling that there's still some tape that comes across your desk, and you're taking a look and evaluating as well, having conversations with your GM, Rand Carthon, with your head coach, Brian Callahan, and, of course, everyone in the scouting system. Yeah, I sure do. I'm heavily involved in all the evaluation, um, whether it's the preseason scouting uh, to the in-season scouting, as well as the uh, the draft. You know, the, the lifeblood of any organi organization runs through the draft. So um, I, I play a part in that as well. And, you know, I'm here to support Rand. I'm here to support the staff. Uh, you know, I've, I have a long history, about, you know, a decade and a half of evaluation. So um, I'm very fortunate to be able to do that. So i got to find time uh, throughout my day to make sure I block off, you know, three, four, you were very good running back at Ohio. You, you came up through the scouting world in the personnel department. You know that. So you've got this old school part of your background. You also very much new school as you have created the analytics program here in Tennessee. So how do you bring together all of that traditional football with, as I said, the new school part you're bringing now? Yeah, I think uh, you, you start with the foundation, and, and I'm very fortunate that I grew up in the organization that I grew up in as, as an evaluator. Um, I think that during my time there, there was eight or nine of us that either led an organization or is currently leading an organization. We were all in the draft room together, so I was around some special people uh, where I got a chance to really learn uh, how to be a, a complete personnel man. And, uh, you know, when it comes to the, the analytics, you know, um, over the years, I just started to, to look how the game is modernizing, how you can and uh, use some of the analytics in your roster building strategies and in-game management, situational football, and just got really intrigued by that and, and started to build that into my toolbox as, as well. So it's it, it's a balance, but it all starts with the experiential intuition. I mean, we can't forget that, um, you know, forget the, the collective wisdom of the coaches and the scouts. You know, that's an important part of this. So there's instinct involved. There's pattern rec recognition involved. Um, so that's the foundation of what we do. But if you can add the exploratory analytics, to it or the historical and what history tells us plus the predictive tools and maybe as we move forward you'll see some AI really pump up, popping up here in the National Football League moving forward uh, when you add those three things together uh, you're hoping to make better decisions but at the end of the day the human makes the decision we can't forget that and meanwhile, Chance Campbell continues to show up here at linebacker for the Titans. Uh, that tackle he made there brings up third down and seven. We'll see what P.J. Walker can do here. The Titans have been showing a lot of linebacker blitz under new defensive coordinator Denard Wilson, and I believe that a timeout is called, yes, by Seattle so we can turn our heads away from the play here a little bit and get back to the conversation, Charles. Yeah, and, you know, as we, as we continue to talk about these things, you mentioned all the things that you're responsible for, all the things that you oversee building relationships with the people who are running those different departments that has to be a big part of what you do because i don't care what we're in <laughs> No you doubt. mentioned the human element. Relationships yeah. drive everything, don't they? Yeah, I, I look at my position as a position of ultimate service. I'm here to, to service uh, our head coach, our general manager, and every single department head. You know, we're, we're about creating leaders within our organization, empowering people to do their jobs. And my job is to help lift them up, give them the tools that they need to succeed in their roles. And it, it, I really look at it that way. That's what true leadership is, is service to others. Take a look here on third down and seven. Allow you to catch your breath here for a moment. Empty backfield. Yeah, right now he's looking out at that evaluator is coming out in about right. the different guys that are out there. Who's going to make that play and have a chance to make this team? Titans bring four. Walker steps up into a pocket and down he goes. 
Titans defensive line stepping up there when they had to have it on third and pass. And that's one of the rookies, Harold, out of Michigan. They had two linebackers taken in the seventh round. And he's in the backfield right there to make the play in the loss of five. Yeah, Chad, and, they, and listen, him coming from right there, what'd you see as an evaluator? Yeah, you know, this is Harold. He's having a really nice camp for us. We drafted him in the seventh round out of Michigan, University of Michigan. Uh, really good team there, obviously. But, you know, that was just a power rush. You know, he came off the ball. He, he plays really hard. He, he's, he's one of those guys that really tries to run through the, the defender, and he gives a lot of good second effort, and he kind of fell back into that play. Well, we'll see if Jaquan Jackson gets to bring this one back. Bounces at the 11. We had a penalty marker come in there as the punt was sailing to Jackson. 52 yards. So, Chad, I hope it's okay because we're going to go to yeah. break right now. Yeah. All right. Is it okay if you stay one more? Oh, yeah, with absolutely. Us? Because Love a couple to do more that. things. Because, Paul, there's also something in his background. I'm not going to say right now. I think I know where you're going. But I think we definitely yeah. need to bring out for people. Yeah. And we'll do that after, okay. we, after we get done here. That's a All tease. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> tease for Chad as well. And let's see if we are going to break. That may have been, uh, they, they may, may tease they, us with that as well. Yeah. They may want to keep it rolling. Penalty on Seattle. It'll be fourth down. So it looks like we're going to have to do this again. There we go. But listen, this isn't the dynamic kickoff, Chad. But what are you, what are you thinking so far from what you've seen from the new dynamic kickoff that's been introduced? And I don't know if any of us have any idea of how it's going to play in the regular season because you know special teams coaches. They're not going to tip their hand now, are they? No, they're not. You know, I think we're all going through a learning experience here in the preseason trying to figure out what's going to work, how to play this play. The, um, and, you know, it's, it's going to be exciting. That's what the NFL wants. They, there was way too many touchbacks over the years, and they want to put the uh, kickoff return back into pro football, and I think it's going to bring some excitement uh, to, to our game again. In the Super Bowl, there were 13 kickoffs. Yeah. Zero will return. Mm. You were an undrafted free agent to camp once, weren't you? Uh, yeah, I was, yeah, yeah, in 2003 with the New York Jets. So I, I totally understand what these guys are going through. <laughs> were you out there in special teams a lot in situations like this? Yeah, I did. You know, I did kick returns, uh, punt returns, and, you know, I was a gunner uh, on, the, on the punt team, ran down on the kickoff coverage, and, um, you know, that was that was the way you, you got to make the team in the National Football That's League right. as an undrafted free agent. Jaquan Jackson was drafted late. I thought he might turn up field there. Makes it out to the 24-yard line. 57-yard punt, 13-yard return. Charles and I will be back with the president of football operations of the Titans, Chad Brinker, and the Titans with the ball right after this. You've always wanted to make a difference in the world. Rand Carthon as they run the ball right up the middle, not much there. Let's take it a level or two or three above to controlling owner a Amy Adams. Let's Strunk. take it to the <laughs> ultimate as, level. As, as high as we can possibly get. As you're talking to the head coach and general manager, what about your relationship and dialogue with the owner? Yeah, vision, yeah. vision for this franchise. Yeah, you know, when when we the, at the beginning of this structure, I sat down with Amy Adams Strunk and and just listened to her articulate what was ultimately her vision for this football team as well as this organization. And she really talked about three things. There's three things that I gained from that conversation with her. And that was she wanted clarity in her structure of the organization. Uh, she wanted consistency and performance. And she wanted stability in the organization. The great or the successful organizations in the National Football League over the last 20 or 30 years has stability at the top. Well, that comes with winning. But consistency in the performance, not only on the field, but off the field, you know, philosophically, our processes and our systems we want to be a draft and develop franchise. That's what that's how we like to approach that. But she also, you know, was kind enough to allow us to go out and spend some money in, in, in free agency. I think we have uh, about two hundred and eighty two million dollars committed in cash this year. Um, so she's really supported that. And then and then ultimately the, the structure that she created here to allow Rand Carthon to do what he really do, does well. And that's evaluate, you know, build a team, build a roster, work with the coaching staff and the players. And then and Brian Callahan can Focus on the product on the field and, and um, you know, just focus on his coaches and, and allow him to do what he does best, and then I could come in and support the group. Third down and 13. That was a very nice pass from Willis to undrafted free agent out of Northern Iowa, Sam Schnee, the former running back at Dubuque Senior High School. I know that because that's my old conference. That's your old conference. Yes. 
Yes. Hey, hey, Paul, you used to put the boots in Dubuque, though, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Okay, there Every we go. That's what we, that's what we needed to know. <laughs> Chad, appreciate all of that. And I think that Miss Amy would also be thrilled to know, and she probably already does, that if something happens to the great coach Dave McGinnis, who is the color analyst for your radio broadcast, oh, no. with Mike Keith, who is the one of the best in the biz, if not the best, <laughs> that she has a backup radio analyst. You used to do that at Ohio University, your school. You called games for them over multiple years. I'm going to yeah. let you and Paul take the rest oh, of this no. series. <laughs> You're going to sit down over there? And, and, off, and off we go. I'll be right over ago. here. I'll be right over here with a big gulp. You guys right. go ahead. What do you go remember ahead. about that? Hey, I, you know, I was with the Ohio Sports Network, and, you know, being a, a, a former player there at Ohio University, they had me come in and do some color. I, I promise you I wasn't any good. I only lasted no. two years, and I moved on. We know better than that. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead and have some fun here, Paul, there you call go. this game. So we just saw Malik Willis put it right on Sam Chenet, second down two from the 43. Yeah, Maybe they give it personnel. to a running back. There we go. There we go. Haskins off the right side, made a cut up field. And see, this is what happens. We get penalty. Know, we get a right? penalty right, right when we're I, we need a big play. That, that's what yeah. we really need right here. You know, one of those deliveries from Willis to Chenet. Personal foul, clipping, offense for 64. It's a 15 yard penalty. Second down. That's what chicken. is your read on the running yeah. back situation right now with, with, yeah. with Haskins and Small and Chestnut? Well, I'll talk about the first two, you know, Tony Pollard and, and Tajay Spears. I mean, I think we got two dynamic backs. We're yeah. really excited to add Tony Pollard uh, to, to our team, and he's been excellent. Pass pro, catching the ball out of the backfield, and, you know, running the football, and then Tajay brings another element to it. But we have a, a battle for the third spot right now between exactly. all these backs. You know, Chestnut's having a nice night tonight. You know, Haskins, you got Small. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a battle there at the at the third spot. See if they can chip away at it here with a run game. Back to the pass. Willis, nice pocket. Well, that's about perfect. Right on Bryce Oliver at the 48-yard line. And Willis much better here in the second half than he was in the first. So that is actually Jaquan Jackson, the rookie for a gain of 23. Yeah, it was, it was good to see that, you know, that we've been playing behind the sticks all night, and it was good to, you know, kind of come out here with this drive and get some momentum, get some things going, and we just ran, you know, uh, vertical. And it was a nice nice timing by Malik. He, he delivered it right over top the linebackers in between the safeties for a first down. And he had to, had to like the end of it. Carlton Johnson gives him a big pop in the back. Ball stays in possession. Jaquan Jackson. No doubt. you, you got to hang on the football in this league. And what an opportunity that Malik has earned here tonight with the way he has developed and progressed in learning the Brian Callahan system and really had a strong couple of months. And once again, penalty marker comes in from the back judge. Yeah, it's been real impressive, you know, just watching the, uh, you know, Coach Callahan and this offense, the, the the operation, the rhythm and timing. I think our quarterback, Will Levis, looks, uh, he, he's getting better every single day with his footwork and his timing and getting the ball out and knowing where to go with the football. And you saw the development. Uh, Mason Rudolph's had a really nice camp, and then Malik continues to get better. And this time the penalty goes against Seattle, so Tennessee will continue to move further and further downfield. And we get a defensive holding penalty, Chad, as you well know. It's not always in the secondary. That one appeared to be up front. And why did they get those defensive holds? Yeah, they try to keep them off the linebackers. Yeah, those defensive linemen grabbing guys so yep. they can't get up to the next level and block. And they were detected there by the back judge. I would imagine Malik Willis as well. He saw Mason Rudolph take the team down with his very first drive for the touchdown. He's motivated here. we got a little fire lit under him here as we approach the four-minute mark of the third quarter. Back to the ground game. Not much off the right side as they get down to the 42-yard line. Yeah, you know, one, one thing that we haven't really hit is, is the other Callahan, Bill. Yeah. You know, Bill Callahan, I mean, arguably the, the – the best coach, offensive line coach in the National Football League. You know, he came in when he came into our building. He did a, I mean, he put on a clinic. It was like one hour of teaching uh, offensive line blocking uh, to our scouts and, and our staff. And I learned more in that one hour than I might have learned in, in a decade uh, from Bill Callahan. He has this strike system. He has a, he knows exactly what he wants. And, and our young offensive linemen are continuing to improve and, and get better. So we're real excited to have him. Yeah, it was interesting to meet you at all. From the back side as he was making the move. A nice rush there by Seattle coming after him from the back side there. That's a tough one trying to get out of the way. That was Jamie Sheriff out of USA, which is University of South Alabama in Mobile. See, he's got his back turned to it, and by the time he turns around, yeah. it's right there in his face. Yeah, that was a good call by the defense. Uh, they wanted to get the ball to the talented, undrafted rookie free agent David Martin Robinson, who they're very high on, as you know very well. Mm -hmm. Hasn't had much of a chance here tonight, and that gets him to third down and 16. Now, Malik did convert him third down and long to Schnee, 
Just a little bit ago, a pair of wideouts to his right and to his left. Watch out from the back side, gets away. And a nice job of making something out of nothing. And it'll give him something to think about. Another flag came in there at the end of the play. And it's a again, holding against Seattle. It's going to go against Seattle again. So they're going to keep moving the ball downfield and picking things up. As you're watching this as an organization, mm -hmm. do you also have a vision now as you're watching this? Do you see the you see this be happening in the new stadium? Holding. Oh, that's going to be defense. That's going to be exciting. Um, the five-yard penalty, automatic first down. There, there's a lot of excitement right now in Nashville. It's one of the hottest cities in, in 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 the country. A lot of people are moving here. You know, the Titans are on the rise. We're excited about what we got going on here and with the new stadium on the horizon. I mean, it's it, this is going to be a fun place. It's a destination spot as is. And if we can get this football team moving in the right direction, put a couple drafts uh, uh, behind us. And, and a couple free agency periods and continue to build this team to have momentum as we go into that new stadium. This place is going to be rocking. Yeah, Paul, you're a Big Ten guy, played quarterback at Iowa. How's it feel standing next to one of the Northwestern Business School guy? <laughs> yeah, and, I, and obviously that's not me. Feeling a little intellectually small? <laughs> is, that, is that what you're saying? Don't, yeah. Don't forget, I went to Tennessee. I wasn't hanging out with those Northwestern guys. Big hit there from the backfield on Jabari Small, another Tennessee guy right there. But that, that new stadium, uh, two more seasons, and, and that's where the Titans will set up shop, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that's, that's where we'll be. And I, I just finished that program, that, you know, within the last five years. So it's not like oh, it was wow. – yeah, so this was – you know, I, the Green Bay Packers, they supported me, and, and I really wanted to take – things to the next level and they supported me to go to that uh, business school I, I don't know how I got in I think they felt sorry for me and let me in I never had a football executive uh, go to Kellogg like that but, um, good so. timing and touch there to Jaquan Jackson and uh, another, another flag, flag. Uh, that, like feels that, against Seattle that feels well. horse collar right there at uh, the end of it well that was pretty a nice job of stepping up there and delivering Titans offense on the move that would be a gain of 18 did don't tell me you commuted from Green Bay to Chicago. Did you? I did. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, what I did was their executive MBA program. And um, so did you go for concentrated time? It was, it was, time every, it was every, other, yep, every other weekend. I drove down there. It was like a three or four day weekend. We had one week intensives, two international uh, studies that you had to complete in order to graduate. And um, it was it was life changing. A program like that is 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 really really special, and it it helped me advance things from the analytics side too, because I was learning new technologies that were out there in the the corporate world that I was able to bring back into the football world. See, it all relates back to football. Paul. There you go. go ahead. Titans are in the pinnacle scoring zone. Pinnacle financial partners play hard bank easy member FDIC Jabari small the tailback off to the left side puts his head down and still fighting not quite done gets inside the five down to the three yard line now you were running back you probably yeah. probably remember those those types of dirty messy tough runs where I you do. just keep churning and you get a little bit more than what people expect well unfortunately i i didn't have any wiggle i couldn't make anybody miss so but i was a straight line make, guy make sure you make sure you make your way <laughs> yeah. right yeah you had to make your way but i i think this is fun to watch you know there's particularly all these guys battling for the third spot on this roster I, all these guys are competing really hard you couldn't make anybody miss. I, I wasn't accurate enough. Charles, how come you got cut? Because I couldn't run. There you go. <laughs> Makes it hard. You know, as a defensive back who can't run, that's what you're known as a cut. And that time, Seattle's defense there on second down and three to bring up third down and goal. I'd love to see Malik get out of the pocket here a little bit, see if he can find one of those young tight ends. And what would be the go-ahead touchdown here for Tennessee? They've not led here yet tonight. 23 seconds and counting left in the third quarter. The one touchdown they had, a strike from Mason Rudolph to Nick Westbrook, Akine, Brian Callahan for I think he's going to let coach. this one go on out. Yep. Give him some more time to think about it. Well, this has been fun. Yeah. Chad, thank I you for taking the time. time to come up yeah. here and yeah. spend Thanks. it with us and educate us more about the Tennessee yeah. Titans. Thank you very much. And congratulations yeah. on you and your new role. And looking forward to continued that. success for you and the organization. <laughs> <laughs> somebody, was, somebody was sampling it. <laughs> and he's like, no, I want my chain back. All right, let's see if this Tennessee de defense uh, meanwhile, can make a play or two. Just a two-point game at this point. B.J. Walker continues to be the quarterback. Why not another flag? False start. Offense, number 85. The five-yard penalty. Still first down. Second-year player out of Maryland, the tight end, Tyler Mabry. So now we get to see how the defense operates within two points in the fourth quarter. And 
See which quarterback gets the call to come back out. It was supposed to be Mason Rudolph, but Malik Willis has had it going. And we'll find that out here in just a little bit. First down and 15 now. Blake locked down to five. Up the middle, not much there. Not a single starter out there for the Titans offensively or defensively. Done a nice job up front there, McClendon. And the rookie Williams, former safety out of Miami, seventh round pick. A lot of defensive rookies selected this year, Charles, because even though they did go offense, first round, J.C. Latham, second down 11 here. Five of the next six picks were on defense. We've seen a lot of them out here tonight. They're addressing team needs, and they wanted to get younger, faster, aggressive. And I think they accomplished that with some of these draft picks. Double pump going down to catch it on the 38-yard line. He was just guilty of the flag. Mabry now with the catch. Not enough for a first down. Clock continues to tick here early in the fourth quarter. Gain of nine. Brings up third down and two. All right, this is where that defensive front has to step up now and make a play for this defense. See right there, Shaheem Carter trying to make the, trying to be on the coverage. Just got one step outside, maybe worked inside and caught the ball. Let's see if these guys right here can hold down the line of scrims and make the play. Seahawks have converted only two out of seven times on third down. This is third and two. Four-man rush. Walker incomplete. Just two out of eight. Chance Campbell, who else in there to make a play in the backfield? And that all worked together very well because they had pressure up the middle. Caleb Farley, number 42, came off the edge and did a nice job. And that allowed Chance Campbell to make a quick read because the ball had to come out fast and almost made another big play tonight. Knocked that one away, and Tennessee should get the ball back. He's mad at himself, but that would have been a tough one to come up with. He did have the game-ending interception last week against San Francisco. Third three and out now for Seattle, their first since the first quarter. Yeah, that's one that if you're Chance Campbell, you got to go to the bench and thank your big guys up front. Putting the pressure on, allowing you to make a play. Jaquan Jackson, rookie out of ten, uh, rookie out of two lane. Fair catch at the 18 yard line. Punt of 44 yards with no return. 12.45 left in the game. Titans trail Seattle by two on the Titans Network, presented by Farm Bureau Insurance. Tall on the line, you turn to the strong. First one went pretty well and put a touchdown on the board. Rudolph, as told to us by Brian Callahan, has the lead in the battle to be the backup quarterback. Trying to hit Sam Schnee. Ball knocked away at the 25-yard line. He almost came up with it, but it's now second down 10. But Paul, he went right into the thorniest part of the field, didn't Man. he? Yeah. Right into the middle, right where the linebackers were. Art Pappy Lewis was the head coach at West Virginia University back in the day, and Sam Huff was his all-time great player, middle linebacker in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Okay. Hall of Fame. Nobody called that area of the field. The Briar Patch. <laughs> you better be careful going to Briar Patch, fellas. Sam Schnee, over 1,000 yards receiving last year in the Missouri Valley at Northern Iowa to lead that conference. Second down 10. Ball batted down. He wanted to get it to Oliver, another undrafted free agent. And just like that, Mason Rudolph will face third down and 10. Mike Morris batted that ball down. Yeah, Morris there. Miles Adams out of Rice, number 95, was also looking to try and assist on it. See right there? Boom. Two big guys with long reaches. Preseason, regular season. Nick Holtz, the offensive coordinator, sitting just to our left. He doesn't want third and ten. No. Regular season. Third and ten to evaluate yep. Mason, give him these kind of reps. And, and evaluate the other players. There you go. Who can shake themselves free and present themselves as a target for Mason Rudolph on third and ten. See if they can block the blitz. That's Oliver. The catch and the run. Just enough for the first down. Good job with the protection up front. Good decision. Oliver gets the first. And, Paul, you know how you used to get your grade sheet when you played? I think he's getting two checks here. Check. Ball up the middle. And the former Michigan linebacker, nowhere to go off to the left side. Does have a 1,000-yard season plus in his time in Michigan coming into the league. And there is Nick Holtz, the new offensive coordinator. Was the passing game coordinator last year for Trevor Lawrence in Jacksonville. And now... Helping call the plays here with Brian Callahan. Goes all the way back to high school with Brian Callahan, high school teammate to De La Salle back in California, Northern California, part of that 151 game streak. And Nick Holes has worked well in the NFL throughout. Decade plus with the Raiders organization before coaching at UNLV. 
and heading to Jacksonville and then Nashville. Here comes a safety blitz quickly out of the hands, and that's the first time we've seen the big tight ends get the ball. They've been trying all night, and that time it is Thomas Odukoya. His first catch, gain of eight. And they're talking about the improvement this young man has made from the day he showed up from the Netherlands, played at Eastern Michigan. He's part of that international pathways program in the NFL where each team has one international player that doesn't count against your roster, et cetera, et cetera. But now they're talking about him being a legitimate threat to make the team. This is no longer just a good story. This is a guy who's really improved. Big time blocker at the point of attack. Now he added a little pass catching on the last play. In competition with David Martin Robinson and also Steven Stilianos, a couple of undrafted rookies trying to beat him out. Rudolph bouncing around, finds an open space. Penalty marker comes in just as Rudolph goes down at the 38-yard line. Well, he was bouncing. I was watching the coverage, and it was tight downfield. Maybe a little two side could be a hold against the Holding. Defense, number 50. Five-yard penalty, an automatic first down. DBs for Seattle have been sticky here in the second half, Charles. That's the third time. Really sticky. So just a little bit too sticky. But for Tennessee, they'll take it. They'll take every one of those penalties. That was Patrick O'Connell, linebacker out of Montana, flagged for that one. Mike McDonald, defensive coordinator last year in Baltimore, number one defense in the NFL, where his defensive back coach, Denard Wilson, on the other sideline now is the first year DC for the Titans. First down and 10 now, trailing by two as we approach the 10 minute mark here in the fourth quarter. Mason Rudolph has one touchdown pass that came late second quarter. And that's Julius Chestnut. He and Jabari Small have got most of the touches for the running backs tonight with a little bit from Hassan Haskins. And that time Chestnut gets four. Let's check in with Corey on the sideline. Yeah, guys, it's going to probably be Chestnut and Haskins the rest of the way. Jabari Small has gone inside to be evaluated for concussion. Okay, they only had three running backs playing tonight, Corey. Thank you, with Spears and Pollard sitting it out. So now it's, as you mentioned, it's Chestnut and it's Haskins. Plenty of time that time. A good throw and catch there for another first down. And a good job of staying on his feet by Jaquan Jackson. The rookie out of Tulane, strong hands and a good move after the catch. Paul, you know what I loved about this play from Jaquan Jackson? Watch how he runs the route. Now, when he stops, he can wait for the football, but that's often his recipe for disaster. Yeah. Watch how he came back at the point of attack, right, at the catch point, and snatched it out of the air so the defensive back couldn't make a play on it. That's a veteran route right there by Jaquan Jackson. And that's exactly what Brian Callahan said. He looks less and less like a rookie all the time. Come back to the ball. Good coaching point. And now to the running game. Hassan Haskins batters it up inside. That's a positive gain on first down. Picks it up between four and five. Tennessee is not led tonight. Trailing by two. They're now within field goal range. And they're thinking touchdown here. Hassan Haskins in this race to be the third back. He is the one who has established himself as the best special teams player for Brian Callahan. Julius Chestnut, as Callahan told us, is the better runner. And a couple more flags come in. I think Tennessee thought that they moved to right Seattle. Ball start. They moved to get it. Offense, number 76. It's a five-yard penalty. Still second down. Jaquan Jackson, the rookie draft pick for Brian Callahan. A couple of grabs here in the second half. That one just now, a couple of plays ago, was nice for a first down. And the fact that they are even considering maybe six or seven wide receivers on the roster, as Brian Callahan said, well, it's a conversation now, is a huge compliment to that group. It certainly is, as is the idea that maybe there's a fourth tight end. Yeah. It's another conversation I'm not sure they expected to have when camp began. Rudolph, that shoulder fade and put it right where he wanted to. Mason Kinsey wanted the flag. He also wanted to catch that ball. Yeah, he's looking for the flag, but I know exactly what Tyke Tolbert, the wide receiver coach, is going to tell him. You know what it is, Paul. Catch it. Play through it. Yeah. Okay, you got to play through it. Don't, don't look for it later. Make your move, be physical, and go catch the football. Mason Kinsey, fifth. Let's make that catch. Exactly. Tenth play of this drive. They're five out of 12, converting third downs as Rudolph looks right now at third down and nine. Four man rush. Rudolph in trouble and ripped down. And again, 
Penalty flag is down. This time in the general area of holding against the offense. You know, Mike Morris makes the play there for the Seahawks. Would be a loss of three. Holding. holding. Offense number 76. The penalties decline. The result of the play is fourth down. Tough series for Andrew Rupsich. Two penalties. Who's that kid in, ba in Baltimore? <laughs> that, that one, Justin Tucker. <laughs> Justin Tucker. Normally you're saying Justin Tucker's got this one, but here we go. Come on. Great Nolison. With room to spare. You got to smile at that one. Now, Paul, he kicked a 57-yarder at Duke last year for North Carolina State. He was like, Coach, I got this one. Colt Anderson, put me in, McBay. I got it. Out of North Carolina State having a moment here. He's the one that just put Tennessee on top, 13-12 to 12 from distance. That was from 59 yards out. Yeah. And he had some room to spare. And, Paul, he was at Iowa State and locally here at Western Kentucky before finishing at North Carolina State. D. Williams from the three. Not, not much space there. Went out of bounds on the left side. So let's go back to pregame. Back when it was 98 degrees. We're checking in with Braden Narvison. Ball came up after what he hit in pregame, ball. And he had he had a few extra. Fantastic. And remember, he's competing with Nick Polk, who last year, I mean, what a season he had. 29 of 30 field goals. And he's hit 78 straight under 40 yards. And that's an NFL record that's active. So Narvison has a hefty competition in front of him, but he's doing all he can to get noticed. First time tonight, Charles, we can say Tennessee on top, 13-12. Kobe Lewis finds the going tough up the middle. We've been talking about rookie linebackers. There's another one, the seventh round pick out of Miami. James Williams lost a one. He's adapting well, having moved up from safety. Sees it very well. No one there to block him. Closes quickly on the running back and puts him on the ground. That's number four. At the U. Second down 11 for P.J. Walker. Floats one down the near sideline. That was well placed. Was he in bounds? No, he wasn't. Aesop Winston Jr. had the touchdown earlier. Trey Avery with the coverage. Those two have been going back and forth all night. Brings up third down 11. And it looked pretty from Seattle standpoint. That's good coverage again by Trey Avery because he doesn't give him room to fade into the sideline and have room to come down with the catch. He has pressed him closer to the sideline than he wants to be. And when the ball came down, he faded. He was on the sideline. Good job by Avery. Good positioning. First year defensive coordinator for Tennessee, Denar Wilson, telling us that had to be better on third down tonight. Well, they're two out of seven. That's the Seahawks. So Tennessee has come through in this spot. This is third down 11. Oh, I think these linebackers are coming. Yes, they are. They get picked up. Walker steps up and fires that one way out of bounds. Coverage coming through there after the blitz didn't get home, and it's fourth and 11. Well, the, the pressure of P.J. Walker certainly felt it. Paul, in your salad days when you were triple threat position in basketball and you were <laughs> pump faking them out of the gym, that's what P.J. Walker was doing because he couldn't, he couldn't find anyone first and foremost, and he felt the pressure. Pump fake, pump fake, pump fake, ball over the sideline. Mission accomplished, Tennessee defense. I think I traveled after that third pump fake, Charles. Yeah, they didn't call it. They didn't call it. Third consecutive punt here for the Seahawks, Jaquan Jackson. Now when you're putting 45 on debut. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe 35. <laughs> That's, it. That's, 45. That's plenty. Boy, that is a rocket. Jaquan Jackson will just let that one bounce at the five and an immediate bounce into the end zone. Inside of seven minutes left, Tennessee leads Seattle 13 to 12 after a punt of 71 yards. This is the Titans Network presented by Farm Bureau Insurance. Can you prove what we've seen in training camp when the lights are brightest, when there you're you playing go. other people? And Jalen Harrell's doing it. Brian Callahan telling us he was looking at the young linebackers, James William and Jalen Harrell. They've both shown up a number of times tonight. Good job in the backfield. Some quick feet there by Hassan Haskins. And of the three running backs playing tonight, he's gotten the fewest amount of touches. And look who's in the ball game now. Playing quarterback. Yeah. Remember, remember we had said, you know, first and third, right? And now second and fourth, they just, so they gave Mason Rudolph another series. And I think you were on target, Paul, because you were wondering the way Malik Willis was operating in the third quarter, would he just remain out there and continue to ride the hot streak? 
I feel like Brian Callahan's given him another opportunity here to continue to capitalize on his play in the second half. Yeah, throwing it well in the second half, Charles, also averaging over seven yards per carry. And that's a good hold off the left side for Hassan Haskins, and a strong finish with some power. Penalty marker is down in the offensive backfield, but that was a strong run there by Haskins. Let's go to the field and check in with Corey. All right, thanks, guys. I am joined now by the second round draft pick out of Texas, the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year, and he is a lean, mean fighting machine, Tavondre Sweat. Oh, don't leave out the Outland Trophy winner. And the Outland Trophy winner. Yes, sir. Yes, All right. Sir. Yeah, you know, the Titans have had one before in Ryan Long. So yeah. You've got good company. Mm -hmm. This, I'm assuming, was your first set of joint practices. How yes, did it sir. go? It went great. Uh, it was great. Just the competition, the uh, level of competing, and like I said, it was just great. I, mean, I had a, like a great opportunity to go against the Warren, so I was just excited. You know, we all know what player Big Jeff is. How much have you learned from him this summer? Um, I done learned a lot from Big Jeff, man. I, wow, my bad. Like I say, I learned a lot from Big Jeff. Um, I'm just excited to play next to him. I mean, anybody playing next to Big Jeff, you're looking to succeed. You know what I mean? So I'm just ready and happy for the opportunity to play next to him. We talked about your mom some. You, you always say, I'm a mama's boy. 100%. I mean, how big of a thrill was it to buy mom a house? Tell me about um, that. It was great. I mean, that was one of my biggest plans when I make it to the next level is to buy my mom a house. And I can't be more thankful to God and the man she created, you know, my mom. And like I said, I'm a mama's boy. I love her to death. And <laughs> I love you, Mom. <laughs> yeah, you look great. I mean, yes, I'm not going to ask you how much you lost, but but you lost something. Oh, 100%. And I'm still going to keep losing. Right. Yes, you, sir. Devondre Sweat, the Outland Trophy winner and Big 12 Defensive yes, Player sir. of the Year. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate I like it. the way he pointed that out. Don't leave out Outland Trophy. As my old coach Hayden Fry used to say, the late great Hayden Fry, yes. if you've done it, it ain't Brandon. No, it's not. It's on the board, right? He carried that home. And believe me, it wasn't stats that won it for him. It was what he did to offenses, created rubble in the middle, mm. and made people go elsewhere to try and get things done. They had to game plan. Him and on the other side of the field, Byron Murphy, who's with Seattle. Think about those two, a defensive tackle on a college football team. <laughs> Murphy was a first-round pick for Seattle. Yeah. Sweat second round here in Tennessee. When you broke the huddle and saw those two, that inside run game was, was null and void. It was over. And there's Tracy Rocker, who's now coaching him in Tennessee, who, by the way, won those awards yeah, at right? Auburn. Yeah. And, and found a good spot in front of the fan on the sideline as well. He, he's, not, he's, not, he's not a rookie. <laughs> Veteran coach right not, there. Second stint here in Tennessee. Not his first time on a hot night. <laughs> I was just glad I was playing defense when we played against that play against Auburn and he was on the other side. Wasn't me who had to deal with him. A force he was. Malik Willis looking to continue a strong second half. Another flag comes in. David Martin Robinson has that one go off his fingertips and picked off by the Seahawks. Ty Okadu comes up with it. And celebrates the check in on the penalty marker. That drive Colt Anderson, the special teams coach for Tennessee, crazy because Colt went to Montana and Okada's a Montana State. Illegal fan. hands, hands to the face, offense in the 72. That penalty's declined. The result of this play is first down Seattle. Those high throws can get yeah, you, Charles. They'll get you because you always get the tip. And defenses work on the tip drill all the time. Something comes off the hands, stays up in the air, and Okada with an extra burst laid out and caught it. Is able to get up and get a few yards on the way back and put Seattle in a good spot out near midfield. Malik watching the interception there on the big board. 329 left. Tennessee clinging to a one-point lead here in the fourth quarter. To help protect the young and young at heart, the sick and the well, to recognize the importance of both physical and mental health. The lead is just one point. Seattle has a couple of timeouts left. Just over three minutes remaining. And P.J. Walker, starting experience last year in Cleveland. And now trying to be the backup to Geno Smith in Seattle. Kyrie Robinson just across the 40-yard line. Yeah, he's been a starter at a few places there in the NFL. Remember his, his stint in Carolina? Yeah. 
And he's there. He played for Matt Rule in college, and Matt plucked him from one of those leagues that tried to get going <laughs> around the country with a whole lot of alphabet names and the whole deal. And he played in one of them, played awfully well, got a shot there, and now he's trying to make the Seattle team. Third team in three years, Carolina, Cleveland, now Seattle. This would do a lot for his status there in the team if he could bring the Seahawks back. Two and a half minutes left. Quickly out of his hands across the 35 and out of bounds. The only touchdown score tonight came from Aesop Winston. Takes that one for a first down. And he had a good week of practice for Seattle against Tennessee. He's going to be an interesting decision for the Seattle Seahawks. But for Tennessee, part of their decision now is what's going to happen in secondary, right? Who's going to be the fourth, fifth, sixth cornerback that you're going to need to utilize to stop these, these passing attacks? Who's going to equip themselves? And maybe someone can make a play here and get noticed. Thought he had the first. He's just a little short third and less than a yard. And they try it up the middle. No. Nothing there. Tennessee's defense throws Kobe Lewis for a loss. It'll be fourth and one. Who needs defensive backs? And look who just got here. He just got here. Abdul Literally. Anderson, who they just signed because of an injury to Marlon Davidson. He's wearing number 78, which is Nicholas Petit Frere's number. Wearing that tonight, and he makes a huge play. Fourth down and one. And the whistles blow. Seattle had a couple of timeouts left. We got down to the two-minute warning, so they didn't have to use it. All right, we've got a game. Tennessee leads Seattle 13-12. Two minutes left. You're watching the Titans Network presented by Farm Bureau Insurance. Everybody loves Just made two tonight. Oh, he just slid that one in. Was waiting for the draw, Charles. It never happened. And he will tell you that's exactly how he played it. <laughs> so Myers' third field goal puts Seattle back on top. 155 left in the game. And, and you know that Brian Callahan not happy that they're down. But what's the flip side of this, Paul? Now you get to see the offense try and come back. Try and come back and try and win a game for you. Who's going to step up and make a play, make something special happen for you right here? This is another part of the evaluation process for himself, his staff, and, of course, for Rand Carthon, the GM, and the rest of the scouting staff who are eagerly watching this game and taking notes on the film, as well as looking around the league at other players who are playing well. Because when you get that final cutdown date, there's guys you liked before, you may have a chance to get again. I'm looking down to the Titan sidelines, Charles, right below us, and Mason Rudolph has his helmet on. Looks like he's going to go back in. Malik Willis handled the last drive for Tennessee that ended with an interception after he had thrown the ball so well in the second half. Yeah, that's and a tough one. Just a little high, wasn't it, Paul? A little high, yep. made it go off the receiver's hands, turned to a tip drill interception. You're not going to bring it from nine yards out, are you? Cordero Patterson would, but he's not here tonight. <laughs> Did that successfully. Sure did. Okay, Mason Rudolph comes in here. 14 starts in the last six years for the Steelers. And some good work ahead. 155 left. They're down two. Tennessee's got all three timeouts left. And Brian Callahan talked to us about his experience and the fact that he played so much at Oklahoma State. Started four games last year at Tennessee and has really shown up in camp. Money time for it to show up now with his team down. 155 left in the game. They had two opportunity, two times in Pittsburgh where he had to step in and become the starter for short stints and did pretty well in both of them. Wants to get that field goal at least here for a win. Rudolph to Oliver. Almost knocked away at the 37-yard line. Like D. Williams, cornerback out of Tennessee, the rookie. Battled Oliver in a big way because this looked like a well-thrown ball to me, Paul. Sure was. And look at it with their flag very often. They won't let you get let those guys figure it out for themselves. Maybe in a regular season game, possibly you get that call. Good, tough, competitive play. Rudolph started the playoff game for the Steelers last year at Buffalo. Ended up being a season-ending loss. Was his first start of the year. Here comes the blitz. Back foot. Good read. And Martin Robinson with a strong run. The crossing route, catch and run for the undrafted free agent out of Temple and a first down gain of 18. This possibility of Tennessee keeping four tight ends now is getting more real with every play this young man makes. And I really don't believe, Paul, that when they went to camp, 
that that was part of the thought process. I think you're right on. I think that he has played his way into a position where they are strongly considering him being part of their roster. Led Temple in receptions last year from his tight end spot. That one from 18 yards out sets him up barely still in their side of the field. 143 left. Still three timeouts remaining. He come right back to a nifty move there. Tried to get out of bounds. Did not. It's okay. He had plenty of time left on the clock. Not a worry. You hurry up to the line of scrimmage. Get yourself going. Remember, three points wins it. And he just had a guy make a 59 yard as he has plenty of confidence. That just happened in the fourth quarter. Extra blitzer comes. Wide open up the middle for Rudolph. Slides at the 40. We wait for the flag. There it is. A first down run and 15 more coming. They've got to discuss how late the slide was for the tackler and, and his launch. That's the discussion that you're going to have as a, as a, as a officiating crew. Did he's connected from 59. They are in his range now. It would be a 57-yarder, 117 and ticking. Still three timeouts left. Rudolph wants to set up the screen, and there it is. And a nice move there. Didn't get out of bounds, but down to the 28-yard line goes Julius Chestnut. They're in great shape right now. Fully within field goal position. Well done. You're not worried about the clock as much, by to, to be frank. And here's the other part. You it. want to go ahead and take it on down now in case Seattle has a Second chance to get the ball back. Out. You want to bleed it on out before this field goal kick. So, Charles, obviously, in the regular season, you'd be playing for the field goal right yep. now with the ball on the 26-yard line. Are you, since it's the preseason, are you still trying to get it down there and score a touchdown just so Brian Callahan can see more of Mason Rudolph? Yeah, I think that it. Listen, at this stage, he's going to trust Mason Rudolph and being a veteran. But if you got a shot, go ahead and take it and let someone make a play. You know, he's going to trust him with the football in this spot. I don't think it's all out, get the field goal. But if Brian Callahan told us before week one, he does play to win these preseason games. He thinks there's value in winning, not just going out there and playing. Rudolph, three out of four on this drive. He also has a 10-yard run. Flag down just as he handed the ball off to Chestnut. See, that's going to drive Bill Callahan, the offensive line coach, crazy. Ball start. Offense. Number 89. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. And Charles, that's just 10 penalties. Yeah, that's just totally not necessary at all. And that's going to drive that's going to drive the <laughs> offensive line coach out of his tree. Mm. We're in a great spot. Now you're going to put us back five yards for no reason whatsoever. And all they were going to do is run the football. You know, we talked about would they let Mason Roth throw it in the whole deal. They just wanted to run it and be in field goal position. Ten plays, 90 yards, backs him up to the 31-yard line. Looks like Rudolph still wants to throw. If they do run, Chestnut is the tailback. Here comes the blitz. Chestnut left side. He ran away from the blitz. Gets down to the 28-yard line. Clock ticking now inside of one minute. Picked up three. Whistles blow. Timeout called by the Seahawks. <laughs> you tell, you know, rookie head coaches, Mike McDonald on the other side, got to show that I'm competing over there, man. I'm not going to just let him bleed the clock out. And how about Brian Callahan being able to talk to Bill Callahan on the sidelines? I mean, can you have a better consigliere? There they are. I mean, can you really do it? Yeah. Michael Corleone had his dad. He said his dad was a consigliere. <laughs> it worked out pretty well. I feel like the only NFL we know is with Bill Callahan in it. Absolutely. Hey, you and I weren't around for him when he wasn't in it. Right now, just wants to see his offensive line. Provide a couple of more holes here. One minute left. Seattle cannot stop the clock again. And now it looks like, oh, that's a big hit in the backfield. Is that Blair again? Man, the safety in. In a hurry. Loss of one. I thought they did a nice job officiating, picking up the flag on the hit Blair had on Mason Rudolph. No, fan, no penalty there. That was right. And then Blair comes in with a big play there. But the good thing is Tennessee's well within field goal range at this point. Braden Arvison earlier in this quarter hit from 59 yards out. Going this way late in the second quarter. Mason Rudolph with the only touchdown pass of the night for the Titans. That went to Nick Westbrook Aquino. 20 seconds and counting now. Chestnut, both hands on the ball, gets down to the 28-yard line. It'll be a 45-yarder, potential game-winning 45-yarder for number 47, Braden Narvison. Out of North Carolina State by way of Iowa State, five seconds left, four. 
And now they stop it with three seconds left. Even had a nice little stint not far away in Bowling Green at Western Kentucky, which is considered a local school here in Nashville. Well done by Mason Rudolph there. A couple of yeah. good runs there. Three out of four passing the ball. And setting up Narvison well within his range now from 45 yards out. Braden thought he had, he's like, I've already had a great fourth quarter, made one from four, 59 yards out. And now he has a chance to make the game winner, too. Yeah, it could be a big night for Braden Narvison. But how about the offense fashioning together that drive? Some big catches along the way, some good runs, some sharp play. And now they have a chance to go home winners if this goes through the post. Will actually be from 46 yards out. Braden Narvison already with a 59-yarder for the win.